And boy, I tell you, I, I, I'm glad to be here today. I, I'm, I'm glad to be here today. I, I'm thankful that that uh, that I can be here today and I can share the word with you. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had somebody I had somebody say, uh, "Are you having church today?" And uh, I said, uh, uh, "Yeah." It, I, the word don't stop going out just because it's raining. Amen. The, the, the word don't stop going out just because it's cold outside. And it ain't cold outside. Now, maybe maybe if you lived in you know Bismarck, North Dakota or something along them lines, maybe it's cold up there. I don't know. But uh, this is some wonderful weather here. But uh, I, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, I'm thankful for all of you that are here this morning. I, I'm, I'm thankful for those that are watching us long, online. Uh, as I said before the before praise and worship started, I welcome you here to New Covenant Church. Uh, share share today's live feed uh, if you're here live. Don't share it yet until you are able to watch the live feed, but um, or or the playback. But share it. Share today's message. Uh, share today's service with somebody. Tag somebody. Uh, somebody that you may you may know. Maybe they didn't make it today for one reason or another. I know that there are many people that are that are out uh, visiting with family. Maybe they're out, uh, you know, for the Thanksgiving holiday. And so we pray God's blessings over you. We pray that that uh, you are able to travel home safely. Uh, I speak God's protection over you. Uh, even those that are here live with us in the uh, all almost said in the studio. We're not in a studio. Maybe it kind of feels like a studio. It's kind of closed in like a studio, but uh, for those that are live with us here this morning, um, I'm, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for your uh, commitment, not to me, but the commit your commitment to the Lord uh, to get into his presence. Um, and I do want to talk about something today. Before I do uh, go into this, um, at, I was on on the subject of sharing the video. You know, we have many, many forms. People have called me and they've said, hey, I, I, I need to give my tithe. I need to do, and, and even as long as we've been doing it, people uh, are not aware of it. We have means of, of giving into this ministry through a mobile means. We have a free mobile app that's free to anybody on iTunes and on Google Play. Uh, you can go to that mobile app. Uh, I believe it's uh, New Covenant PA, I think, or New Covenant Port Author. I can't remember. This is a horrible commercial. But um, it's free. And there is a secure link that is embedded into that that will take you to a giving link. You can give tithe. You can give into the building fund. You can give into the into missions. You can give into the children's ministry. And so you can select that on that tab. You can go through the mobile app. You can go through our website newcovenantpa.com and you can also text the word new covenant all one word new covenant to 77977 and that'll take you to a secure giving link you can also uh, we do still use snail mail here uh, 2601 highway 73 west in port author texas 77640 is the zip code amen so are you glad to be here today yes. amen i'm going to ask you to pray about being a being a supporter of what god is doing here i am still doing everything i possibly can do to get buildings here for some temporary service buildings. Um, I, I'm doing what I can. I'm 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 fighting uh, holiday shutdowns and things of that sort. And so, if you it, it, just be in prayer, I'm asking you to pray. You know, I mean, I wonder how many people pray for New Covenant Church and for this pastor. And I'm not I'm not talking about you know, hey Lord, help him. Uh, you know, I'm lifting up my pastor. But I, I'm saying, how many people? I mean, earnestly intercede on my behalf? How many people really, truly intercede, go into God's presence and say, I am going here on behalf of my pastor. I'm going here on behalf of the pastor of New Covenant. Now, I don't have to be your pastor to do that, but you, because I'm going to tell you right now that there are forces out there, there are ministries that are targeting ministries of God to break them down, to destroy them, and to keep them from doing what God has put us here to do. And it takes the committed prayer of the saints to continually go into the presence of God and to come against those forces. Amen? And so I'm asking you to, to, to commit to that. 
And so it kind of leads me into this this subject. We've, we've been in this series, Follow Me, for, for 20 weeks now. And the 20th installment uh, of this series is Follow Me in Submission. Jesus teaches us how to submit. And, and I want to share some things with you today that, that maybe you don't, maybe you've not heard it before, maybe you've never heard it before, but, but Jesus does teach us how to submit. And you might say, well, you know, he, he's, he, he is the Messiah. What, why does he need to submit? Let me tell you something. There, there, there is rank and order in the kingdom of God. And he, as the Son, the only begotten Son of God, had to submit to the Father. Okay? And so it's absolutely necessary that you and I were to do the same. We, we have to operate our lives in submission. And so let me just kind of give you just a, a very simple definition of what submission is. Uh, this is a very simple definition. The word submission, it means to accept or to yield to a superior force or to the will or the authority of another. Let me say that one more time. When we are in submission, we are accepting or we're yielding to the superior for, to a superior force, or we are yielding and accepting of the will or the authority of another. The authority of another. In fact, submission can be broken down very simply as a condition of being submissive or humble. Humble. Being humble. Being compliant. Now, a lot of times people don't understand what the word humble is. They don't understand, well, what does that mean, be humble? Because I've heard that in the, in the Word of God. I've heard be humble, you know, that we've got to be humble. Well, let me tell you what humble is not. Humble, the opposite of being humble is being defiant. So when we refuse to be in submission, we are being defiant. That's very simply explained. We are being defiant. Here's another word that we hear in the King James is rebellion. It, it, it is a word that, that means literally, that, now this is the very opposite of submission, is being rebellious. Rebellionness is a word. It is a word. You can look it up on your own time. Rebellionness. In other words, we have rebellion in our life. And there's a scripture in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, when Samuel the prophet was speaking about King Saul, and he says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yes. This is what rebellion is. So when we refuse to submit in any form or fashion, when we refuse to be humble, we are being defiant. In other words, we are in rebellion. And according to the Old Testament, according to 1 Samuel 15, 23, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. We live in a world, folks, we live in a world where, where we promote rebellion. I want you to think about the different kinds of shows that are on television, the things that come across Facebook feeds. It's like we're promoting rebellion, to be rebellious. We are promoting these things. We're glorifying it. When a child or when a young person is in disobedience, when, a, when someone, doesn't even have to be a child, could be a grown man, is in all-out rebellion or all-out defiance against the law, and we glorify it on social media, even on secular news channels, we are glorifying people breaking the law and going against what God said. He said to submit to the law. Submit to those that are in authority over you. And so we glorify those kind of things and we say, hey, look at this. Oh, it's free speech. We should speak out. We should, we should speak our opinion. You know, and we glorify those things. So in the secular world, we are promoting rebellion and we think it's funny. How many likes can this post get in total defiance against the authority that is over an individual? And we base our life off of these things. People don't want to listen. People don't want to take instruction. 
People want to be the God of their own life. They don't want anybody telling them what to do. And you know what they do? And listen, I, I'm guilty. I'm just as guilty as anybody else. I'm just telling you today, I'm not exempt from this. I'm just as guilty when I say that we we are all sinners. And this is, this is a very poor excuse. We are all sinners is a very poor excuse of living a life in darkness. When, when Listen, the Word of God plainly says that He called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. And so, but this is part of the rebellion that we see in the world. This is part of the lack of submission. Let me just remind you one more time what submission is. Submission is being humble. Submission is a condition of being submissive, which is the exact opposite of being defiant. You know, and here's the thing is people say, well, you know, I'm obedient. I do the things that I'm supposed to do. There is a very huge difference between obedience and submission. Uh, Obedience is very simply this. This, this is the comparison between the two because I hear people say that all the time. Well, I do what I'm told to do. A lot of people do what they're told to do. I do what I'm told to do from time to time whenever she tells me. But there's a difference between obedience and submission. Obedience is following orders. Obedience is following commands. Obedience is following instructions. But look, let me tell you this. Just because someone is obedient does not mean that it's guaranteed that that person is willing to comply. Let me say that one more time. Just because you follow orders, just because you follow commands, just because you follow instructions, it does not guarantee that a person has a willingness to comply. But here's the thing is, is on the submission side, and this is the comparison between obedience and submission, when you submit, you are will, remember, you're yielding to the will or, uh, or authority of another. Okay, You're submitting. You are yielding to the will of another person or an authority. And in this submission, a person has respect and has love for those that are in power. That's a huge difference. There's a huge difference in, in the obedience side that does not guarantee that a person has a willingness to comply. And on the uh, submission side, that a person has respect and love for that person that is in authority. Interesting, isn't it? People say, well, I'm not a bad person. I mean, I don't go out and I don't kill. I don't, I don't steal. I don't chew tobacco. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't chew and spit and smoke and drink and, you know, raise all kinds of hell around the world. I don't do all these kind of things. I'm not a bad person. But rebellion is not necessarily doing the things that I just said. Yes, that would be classified as rebellion, but that's not all. Have you ever thought about a lifestyle of sin? We're all sinners, right? Isn't that what we use? That's the excuse that we use, right? We're all sinners. But that is a that is something that we use to justify the things that we're doing. Amen. We'll take the Word of God and we'll twist it just enough to make it fit our life so that that rebellion looks okay because everybody else does it. And I'm, I'm, I tell you this because I'm saying I'm guilty and I've done it. And I've, I've used that excuse. Well, I'm just a sinner, you know. I'm, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Oh, my God, he loves me so much. And he knows my heart. He knows my heart. I believe he does know my heart. But I believe that he also wants me to be honoring and pleasing to him. Amen. I believe that my lifestyle should reflect the very words that come out of my mouth. Yeah. If I'm going to claim to be a Christian and if I'm going to claim to be a father, a, a follower of the way. In other words, if I'm going to follow Jesus, then I need to walk like Jesus. I need to talk like Jesus. I need to act like Jesus. But instead, we've got a world walking around saying, well, I'm just a sinner. It's okay. Jesus loves me. And that may be so up until a certain time. There's a scripture that says that when I was a child, I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. And I I walked in childly ways, but there's a time when I've got to grow up and I've got to be the man of God that I'm called to be, which means acting like a man of God, which means acting like Jesus, walking like Jesus, and talking like Jesus. So we can't use that excuse forever. It might work out for a little while. 
But after a little while, sometimes we need some discipline in our life to start acting like a child of God. But people say, I'm not a bad person. And I'm not a bad person either. Mike Halliburton is not a bad person, but you know what? There was a time in my life when I was refusing God's calling on my life. I was refusing to walk in the calling of, of God on my life. And I was in rebellion. That is another definition of what rebellion is, is refusing to do what God has told you to do. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to walk in God's will. I had a different plan for my life. Now, I'm not, here to, I'm not here to share my testimony today, but part of that is the fact that I had grander plans for my life. Well, let me tell you something. We can't even imagine what God has for us. And most people in the world today do not know what God has for them because they've refused to walk in God's will. One of the, a different way of, of rebellion is trusting in our own ability instead of God's. Yes. We try to figure it out on our own. We try to figure everything out on our own. We try to, we're going to be our own man. We're going to be our own woman. Whatever the case may be, we're going to go our own way. We don't want to trust the way of God. Because sometimes the way of God will take you through the wilderness. Maybe y'all didn't hear that. But the children of Israel wanted the promised land, but they didn't want to go through what it took to get there. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. They didn't have to. But they chose not to be obedient to what God said, and it, it cost them a lot of extra time. And people get discouraged about that, and they say, well, I don't want to go through all these trials and tribulations in my life. I don't want that. But Jesus said, if you're going to choose to follow me, you, you're going to face some things that you ain't necessarily wanting to go through. But he says, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. I've conquered the world. Trust in me is what he's saying. Follow me. Follow me into submission. That's the message for today. Follow me into submission. How about when you choose to not forgive someone? Oh, I don't want to forgive that person. Uh, you just don't know what that person said to me. You don't know what that person's done to me. I refuse to forgive that person. When we choose not to forgive, we are in rebellion. Can I remind you that rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft, which is the exact opposite of what God is. The exact opposite. And you say, well, you know what, preacher? That's some Old Testament stuff. So therefore, since we're under grace and we're not under the law, then that just doesn't apply to my life. Well, that, I just say contraire. <laughs> Because Jesus pointed it out in Luke 6.46 when he says, You say, Lord, Lord, to me, but you refuse to do what I say. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Jesus himself said, Lord, Lord, you refuse to do what I say. So many people today, and including myself, I've been there and I've walked the walk. I've walked the walk and I've got the t-shirt to prove that I was at that destination in my life when I said, Oh, Lord, Lord, but I did not do what the Lord was saying. Because I was refusing to walk in God's will for my life. There was a time when that took place. And so therefore I found myself in a place called rebellion. Which is the opposite of submission. You know what God wants? God wants willing vessels. That's what God wants. He wants people that are willing. Willing to be there. Willing to serve. Willing to honor God. Must be a party going on in the bathroom. But there's a, 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 a when we when we walk contrary to the word of God, then we find ourselves in rebellion. And you say, well, it, it, since you've told us all these things, what is the solution? I mean, what do I do? I want to give you a solution. It's very simple. It is very simple. This is the solution to what I've just told you. First thing we've got to do is we have to learn to humble ourselves. We've got to learn to humble ourselves. Well, what does that mean, preacher? You've got to allow yourself to come down off of your high horse. Jesus left that kingly estate and came to a place that was extremely humble. He was born in a, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even call it a stable. I wouldn't even really call it a manger that he was in. 
because it was not it was not that glorious. You know, we think today in today's days, you know, we're we're coming into the Christmas season and you see all sorts of decorations of of little baby Jesus in this cute little wooden manger and and all these animals are are strategically placed around this baby that's laying in this cute little cradle looking thing with hay all over the place. But it's sim- the simplicity of it is this, is it was not a very glorious place. It was more or less probably like a cave. Well, I think we probably heard the story there was no room in the inn. Okay, in, in Luke chapter 2, you can read the story. It's, it's, it's a more defined story in Luke chapter 2 of when he came and he was born. There was no room in the inn, right? And so when he was placed in this little manger thing, in this little uh, cradle thing, it was really a place that they fed animals. Mm-hmm. It's where they would dump the slop or dump the food, dump the feed into this honed out area that was in the rock that would hold their feed. This is where the Savior of this world was laid. He left a very kingly estate to come to this world to save a dying people because he loved us that much. And all he's asking for is humility. All he's asking for is submission to his will. The second thing we've got to do is that we've got to examine our lives. And you say, preacher, how do we examine our lives? How do I examine my life? All you have to do is take the Word of God and compare the way you are living, the things that you are doing, the things that you are saying with the Word of God. How does it line up with the Word of God? Because if we are doing the very opposite of what this Word says, then we are in rebellion, which is as the sin of witchcraft. That's so very simple. You know, people say, well, it's so hard. I mean, I've got so much going on in my life that I have to examine. I'm telling you right now, every situation that you'll ever find yourself in is in the Word of God. Everything that you'll ever go through in your life is in the Word of God. And if we are living in opposition to the Word of God, then we find ourselves in rebellion. We are the furthest from being submitted to His will for our life. I mean, you think about this. You think about what the Word says in Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the will that I have for your life. But do you know the plans that he has for your life? He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.5, he says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, and I anointed you to do a certain thing. But you see, we are running from that certain thing all the time because it's not pleasing to our flesh. Well, we want to do what we want to do. I mean, we, you know, we only live on this earth for you know, X number of years. That's right. This earth is not our home. We are just passing through this place. And if we are going to call ourselves ambassadors of Christ, we need to start acting like Him. We need to start talking like Him. And we need to start responding like Him. I believe the next thing we need to do in this solution is to repent. Listen to what I'm telling you, folks. In order to repent, that's the third thing I've got on my list. Uh, In order to to repent, we've got to go back and we've got to examine our lives with the Word of God. We've got to humble ourselves. So let me tell you this. Let me take them in order. When we humble ourselves, when we get off of our high horse and get down on level ground, and we examine ourselves with the Word of God, do you know what it is going to do? It will expose those things that are in your life. It will expose expose the heart the, uh, or the, the, the wicked intent that's in the heart of man. It will expose those things and once it does, then you come to that place where you say, gosh, I'm not as great as I think I am. Lord, I'm so sorry. Now, I'm not just making up some bland prayer. I'm just saying that when we come to that place in our life where we recognize that the Word of God exposes, because this is what the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit will expose things in our life. And once it's exposed, it's up to us. We can't claim ignorance anymore. Oh, I know that's a strong word. I can't believe he said that from the pulpit. Well, this is a makeshift pulpit. So you can't hold it against me. 
but when he exposes it to us, we can't claim ignorance anymore because the Holy Spirit has pointed something out in our life. We can't say, oh, well, we're all just sinners now. We've got to say the Lord has pointed something out to me in my life and now it's up to me to take it to the altar and lay it on the altar and say, God, bring restoration in my life because now he's exposed it. He's pointed it out to us. I mean, think about this. We, yeah, we, we, when we have, ch how, how many adults do we have? I mean, how many, uh, we, we got quite a few adults in here. How, how many parents are in here? I'm a parent, right? Okay. How many, how many uh, in here have ever been a child before? <laughs> Uh, okay, so that, that includes everybody, right? So, so if you're not a parent, you've at least been a child at one time, right? Okay, so as a parent, we start out, we start out training our children, all right? We're teaching them about submission. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, what go, you know where we go wrong? Is when we glorify our children for doing wrong things. Oh, it was really cute the first time they did it. Yeah? You know, we laughed. Oh, look how adorable. But then they see the attention that they get for doing wrong. And then they do wrong so many times, and it's no longer cute. Now you're frustrated with them. But they think it's cute because there was a time when you thought it was cute, when I thought it was cute. And we've taught this, and we've, we've bred that into them from the very beginning. Now listen, I'm going to say something right now that is fixing to turn people off. <laughs> but the rod of correction will drive that rebellion far from that child. <gasps> oh my goodness. He advocates whipping his child. <laughs> you dang skippy, I did. <laughs> and you know what? I got my butt whipped when I was a kid. Can you testify? <laughs> Hey, it, short of child abuse, whatever was close by, I remember my grandmother, my nanny, she would grab a wooden spoon out of the drawer and tear that tail up. I, I love going to Stuckey's. How many people remember Stuckey's? I think there's still a Stuckey's out there. Do they still sell a bunch of garbage like they used to? Okay, well, well, I used to love to go to Stuckey's when we would go on a trip, and I loved getting the little, the thing with the ball and the string, you know. As soon as we got into the car, the string got broke off, and that was now a weapon. Yeah, that's a good battle. Tear that tail up. Do you know what? Sometimes we need to get a whipping from God. Sometimes we need sometimes we need some discipline. And I'm going to tell you right now, it needs to happen in my life on a daily. Because if I if I am left to go my own way, then it's going to be like that little child. It was cute at first. Now let me tell you something. Anytime we're rebellious to God, it's not cute to God. Don't ever think that God is laughing and saying, oh, how cute. Because he, he identifies what rebellion is. It is as the sin of witchcraft. I personally need to get into the, the spanking room of God on a regular basis. So we're going to have to humble ourselves and we're going to have to examine our lives and then we're going to have to come to that place where we recognize that sin and we repent. We turn from that sin. Let me tell you something. When we trust in the Lord and when we align ourselves with His will, that's what I'm saying here. We've got we've to trust in the Lord and we've got to align ourselves with His will. How are we going to know what God's will is for our life unless we get into the Word of God? Because He will reveal it to you. Your life is in these pages. Every, every, every word that's in here was as it was written specifically to you individually. Written to me individually. This is God's love letters to me. And if I take it that way and if I read this word and I, I allow this word to be absorbed into my life, I'm going to begin to trust in him. And I'm going to begin to align myself with his will. And the second thing you've got to do on top of that after the repentance is to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us on a daily. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us every single day. Now listen, we, we, could, get, we could get really 
super spiritual about this, but it's very simple. It's really very simple that Jesus himself was guided by the Holy Spirit everywhere he went. I don't know if we really realize that. I don't know if you've ever read that in the scripture, but after Jesus was baptized and you and and when we started that when I started out this message, you might have said, "Well, is he ever going to give us this example of Jesus teaching us to be submissive?" Turn to Matthew chapter 3. Aren't y'all glad I'm going to share some scripture with you today? I can't leave you, can't let you leave this place without getting some scripture. Amen. But in Matthew chapter three, we see, uh, and if you read the beginning of this of this chapter, we see John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. This is John the Baptist, and I don't know if you know this or not, but John is Jesus' cousin. He's his older cousin, as a matter of fact. He's older than Jesus by about six months or so. Nevertheless, he's still older than Jesus. I mean, at least more than one person other than Frenchie is older than Jesus, and that's John the Baptist. But in this story, in this story, or in this chapter, I'm sorry, in this chapter of, John, of Matthew chapter 3, we see the baptism of Jesus. In verse 13, Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. It was necessary that Jesus would submit to John. And you say, I don't see it. There's no way. Listen to, this, listen to what's read here. But John talked to him. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one that needs to be baptized by you. And he said, so why are you coming to me? And Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. You see, it was necessary that Jesus would come from this high estate to this low estate and be submissive to the Father's will. It was necessary. Let me tell you something. John had a purpose. John, you know, I mentioned just a moment ago about, about knowing God's will and about aligning yourself to God's will. What was, John's, what was God's will for John? God's will for John, according to Isaiah, was to pave the way for Jesus. He had to lay the foundation for Jesus. It was required of John to be the forerunner. In other words, he's the one that plowed through the forest and cut down the trees so that a highway could be made. He laid the foundation. It's kind of like the forefathers of our nation here in America. The forefathers came to our, to our nation and they paved the way. They, they laid down foundation. They laid down some, some laws. They laid down some guidance for our nation. And for the last 250 years, people have been trying to tear down those foundations that they paved the way for. Now, they're not living today, but the things that they did back then is the foundation that we walk on, the foundation that we talk on, the foundation that we travel through our life upon. It was required to be done. The things that John did, they were required to be done. He laid the foundation for Christ to come. And so it was necessary. Jesus said to John, this needs to happen. It's absolutely necessary that we follow God's requirements. And so John agreed. And after his baptism, Jesus came up out of the water and the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and setting upon him. And this is the purpose. This is the reason why. I hear so many people saying today, I just don't know why I'm going through all these things. I just don't know why. It's like God doesn't love me. Let me tell you something. God loves you. He does. He loves you. But if you want the affirmation of the Father, you've got to be willing to submit to the will of the Father. And this is exactly where we find Jesus. We find Jesus being affirmed, given his identity by the Father. When he was willing to submit himself to John, be baptized by John, and it says, a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly beloved son who brings me great joy. Can I just say to you today that God, God says the same thing about you and me when we submit to his will? That's my beloved child. 
that's my beloved son. That's my beloved daughter. I love my son. I love my daughter. We receive that affirmation. I mean, you think about a mother or a father here on earth. When their child is submissive and does what they're supposed to do, not because they're obeying, but because they're willing to submit. Remember the difference between obeying and submission? I mean, I obeyed at work all the time. When I, when I worked in the refinery, I would obey those that were over me, my superior. It, it didn't necessarily mean that I liked it while I was doing it, but I respected that authority that was over me. Now, there's a difference between doing something, and that's a child. Children do because they're obeying. But again, there comes a time in their life when they transfer from that obeying to the submission because they love and they're willing to submit to that authority. Amen? Amen. It's absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary that we learn to submit. That we learn to submit. And Jesus is our example. Everything throughout this word Jesus teaches us. He doesn't point and say go. Remember, Jesus shows us. So he says, follow me and I will show you what submission is. Jesus was willing to submit. Jesus was willing to surrender over. I mean, you think about that. You think about I mean, he was God in the flesh. God in the flesh had to submit. He sure did. He submitted to the calling of John. He submitted. And think about, I mean, Jesus could have said, ha, I mean, I, I mean, I've been around forever, you know. I was there, John, when, when, when Daddy said your name. I was there. I mean, he could, and that's what a lot of us do. We're arrogant like that, aren't we? I know more than you. I mean, I should be the one up there preaching, not you. But when we're willing to submit and we flip the tables and instead of having that arrogance, we're like, how can I be of assistance? How can I train? How can I, you know, what can I do? Jesus was willing to submit to John. He was willing to be obedient to the Father. How about you? How about me? Am I willing? Now, I can't answer that for you. I can't answer it for you. I can't answer that for you. I can't answer that. I can't answer that for those that are watching us online. I can't answer whether or not you'll be willing to submit. I can tell you right now, you might think you're in control. You might think that you're your own man, your own woman, whatever the situation. You might think that. But until we come to the place where we say, Father, I'm... I've been trying to do it on my own. I've been trying to go my own way, and I recognize that I'm always messing it up. I'm always tripping up, and, and, I, and I'm always making mistakes. And there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But when we come to the place and we follow the lead of Jesus, where Jesus says to submit, instead of him saying what he said in Luke chapter 6, verse 46, when he said, you say, Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I tell you to do. What did Jesus do? He always did what the Father said. He always spoke what the Father spoke. Jesus identified that. He says, I only do what I see my Father do, and I only say what I hear my Father say. In so many words, he said that. How about us? Can we say that? Can we say, I only say what I hear my Father say? I only do what I see my Father do. Can I say that? Can you say that? I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know where you're at watching right now online. Maybe you're watching this months down the road. Maybe you're watching this next week. Maybe you're watching this in the year 2025. I, I don't know. But you've been trying to do your own thing for all this time, all these years. You've been trying to work it out your own way. But I'm going to tell you the only way to really win is through submission. I used to hear Charles say it all the time. He's the only, the only army in the world that wins through giving up. And I'm just asking you today, are you at that place in your life where you're really ready to surrender? When you're really ready to submit everything to Him? Maybe that's you watching this. 
Let me tell you something. The anointing that is on the Word of God, His anointing, His touch, it is eternal. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot duplicate the anointing when you gather together as believers. But I'm going to tell you right now, the anointing that is on His Word right now is going to be just as powerful in five years as it was 25 years ago. His anointing is powerful. And so I just speak over His Word today. I'm just going to ask all those that are in this room today with me that you would agree with me. Maybe you could stand with me and just say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand with my pastor, I'm going to stand with Mike, and I'm going to trust the Father. I come against rebellion in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word plainly says it is witchcraft. And Jesus plainly, he, he plainly shows that in Luke when he says, you don't even do what I say. That's rebellion. That's opposition to what he's speaking. And so, Father, right now, I come against that in the name of Jesus. Right now, I come against the spirit of rebellion in the name of Jesus. I break it off of this service. I break it off of those that are here right now. I break that spirit of rebellion off of those that are watching right now. I come against that root. I pull it out of the ground right now, and I cast it into the fire. And God, right now, I give you praise, Father. I thank you, Lord God, because just like when Jesus was willing to submit at the Jordan, it says that the heavens were open. And not only did the Holy Spirit come on the scene, but your love for the Son showed. And you said, that is my Son in whom I am well pleased. I love where it says that when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, it says that he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. After the times of testing, it says that he came out, and once he, he said, Satan, get behind me, it says that everywhere he went, he went in the power of the Holy Spirit. My God, if we would just grasp that, that we could go in the power of the Holy Spirit when we submit to you, Father, I just speak over those that are here right now. Father, that they walk in submission to you. Submission to your, to your will for our lives. God, that you, that every single person that leaves this place, every person that turns off this live feed today, Father, we'd no longer go on our own power, go on our own will, but God, we would be submissive to you. That we would surrender ourselves over to you. And God, I give you the glory today. I give you the praise for the opportunity, God, to share your word today. Because as always, your word will not return to you void. But it will do what you sent it out to do. So God, I thank you for that. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As they're playing this last song, I just want to encourage you. I said it at the beginning. We, we've just passed through the Thanksgiving season. I just want to encourage you while they're singing. I don't know what's going on behind me. I don't know if what, but I, I just want to encourage you of submitting yourself to him and saying, Father, and, and, and here's the thing, and this is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Maybe you've been walking with the Lord for quite some time, but you've gotten away from him. And I, I, it's, it's like I'm hearing this. Uh, listen, it's like I'm hearing, it's like I've done too many wrong things. I've made too many dumb decisions. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You've got air in your lungs and you have the opportunity to say, Father, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you and I say, Father, I want to submit to your will. I want to encourage you today to do this. I want to encourage you. He says that we can start fresh and new. We can go through that process of purging those things out of our lives. When we allow ourselves to be put into the fire... We are allowing those things that don't belong to be purged out of our life. I don't know about you folks, but I need to be thrown into the fire. I know that sounds, I know that don't sound good, but I need to throw, I mean, need to be thrown into some holy fire so that the things that don't belong in me will be purged out. Father, right now, any person that's in this place, any person watching online right now, I just encourage 
to just come to that place where we will humble ourselves, where we will allow the examination of the Word of God to expose. And that, Father, that we would lay those things at your altar this morning and say, Father, cleanse me. He said that if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He forgives us and He cleanses us. We were dirty, but now we're clean. And we receive the affirmation of the Father that says, that's my son, that's my daughter, they belong to me. God, I give you praise today for your word, and I thank you for what you're going to continue to do. God, as we trust you, as we walk according to your will, and as we glorify you in everything that we do, in the mighty name of Jesus.